Greetings, my name is Alex Busetta, consultant at Abacus team and also adjunct professor at McGill University. The purpose of uh, this video is to go through what we call process capability. And uh, we're going to go through some uh, examples using numbers, but first to, to explain CP, CPK, it's uh, typically there's a lot of confusion based on, on these uh, notions. So if this uh, situation that you see here is showing you how much time customers would like to spend with a financial banking advisor, so minimum 60 minutes, maximum 120 minutes. Look at this one over here, bottom center. This is the ideal situation, right? I would sample all customers walking in and 100% of them are spending between 60 minutes and 120. So my CPK is very good. The one at the right side, my yield or my success rate is 0%, right? I'm spending way too much time with my customers. But still, if we look at the CP, and the CP is what we call the potential capability. So just to summarize, CPK is what I convert to a percentage. And CP is an additional information, which is a potential capability. And CP higher than one, this is saying to me that, you know what, if I could move my average, if I could provide a checklist, reduce a little bit waiting time, etc. If I could do this, just move my average, I've got an interesting situation. So um, CP is giving me just that piece of data over here. Same thing here on top, if you look at the top right one, CPK is lower than one, right? There's a percentage, there's a certain percentage of customers that are met a little bit too long. But my, so my CPK is lower than one, but my CP is higher than one. So if I move this one over, I have a good situation. That's, and that's what my CP is telling me. Now look at the one at the center. This one, if I move it, doesn't make a difference, right? Uh, I will need not only to move the average, but I will need also to squeeze uh, the distribution. I need to reduce variation. So in this case, my CPK is lower than one. I do have defects, but also my CP is lower than one, right? And I will need to reduce variation in my process and play with my average, et cetera, to get something interesting. Now let's look at some uh, data and examples. And I'm using here the Lean Six Sigma com, uh, companion from uh, Abacus team. Um, so if we look first at one situation, and here I took situation when we're looking at a small bottle of medication. So it's a liquid, it needs to be minimum 95 milliliters and maximum 105 milliliters, right? More or less would mean that uh, I've got uh, either too, too much medication or not enough. So those are milliliters. If you look at the situation here, you see the histogram, it doesn't look bad at all, but still I've got some bottles that are a little bit overfilled and some bottles underfilled. And you see the CPK 0.83, which corresponds to a yield of 99.3%. On that template, you also have what we call the Z short term. Z short term is also what we call the Sigma value is it is a process two sigma three sigma four sigma six sigma etc and you also have a yield long term and the yield long term is really a projection it's a forecast i collected let's say data here that you have on the left for a few weeks what is the prediction of how that performance would be in a year from now if i got data for a year and that's my yield, which is saying to me that should typically the projection is gonna fall down to 83%. What is really mostly used is the short term, uh, although. So now let's, uh, let's play a little bit with the specifications for fun. And let's say that the upper spec limit is not 105, or if you prefer my maximum, but I would put here 100. 
you see what's happening on my distribution. This situation would mean that I need to be much more careful with my uh, what I put in my bottle, and I've got way too many defects, right? Near CPK in this case is much lower, 0 0.01, and my overall yield is now 50%. So much less interesting performance uh, in this case. And if I widen my specification, let's say 180 to 120, look at the number below, CPK of uh, three, wow. So in terms of a Z short term or sigma value, this is 10 sigma, right? It's, it's uh, better than six sigma. So now let's look at some comparison. So I'll go back to the overall menu and I'll take your before and after analysis. And here we improved a process before and after. Uh, just for uh, clarity, we took very, very wide specifications. You see in that little bottle, it's between 30 milliliters and 202 before improvement and same specifications after improvement. Look at the, what you have here, right? The difference is the data. We improved the process. So we have a better process of filling the bottles before we see the defects in the graph. And you see there's a CPK of 0 0.34. So if we convert it to a percentage and the tool does that for you, of course, is 84.6%. And after improvement, this is a CPK of five and a yield short term of 100%. So I've got, uh, I've, I've got virtually no defects. And you see it in the graph. The graph here shows that, wow, all my bottles are meeting my specifications. So in a nutshell, uh, if you look at comparing, uh, and let's look at that summary table here, just to compare apples with double apples and conclude on what we've seen on the graph. So in this case, my CPK improved, right? Increased from before to after. My yield improved from 84 to 100%, so there is a change of 15%. If you prefer to talk about sigma levels or Z values, so I had one sigma, now I've got 13 sigma. Again, keep in mind this is an example just to show drastic differences. And did the yield improve? Yeah, the, the tool is checking for you if there was any improvement. So overall, uh, today with this video, we wanted to really make a little bit distinction between and really explain better CPK versus CP, uh, understanding the, the relation between CPK and a percentage, and conclude in terms of how this type of analysis can help you. Keep in mind, if you're talking with quality professionals, green belts, black belts, master black belts, they will understand Z values, sigma levels, uh, CPK, etc. If you're talking to colleagues that are, don't have that type of training, talking to your managers, employees, suppliers, customers, use percentages, right? Everyone understands a percentage. And this is actually the ultimate goal of using CPK. So hopefully that uh, this video was uh, uh, helpful and thank you very much for your uh, time.